Hey guys, it's Full Cards here live and direct from Brooklyn, New York, and today I thought I'd mix it up a bit, uh, swish it up a bit, you know, put it in a blender tent or something a bit different. I have the Panini Golden Age, which is 2012 actually. Uh, it's a bit different. It's actually a baseball product, but it's a bit broader than a baseball product, and I thought I would discover it alongside you guys. I don't know this product well. Um, I'm not a big, major baseball aficionado. I have been in the past, but this is actually more historical. It has all kinds of stuff within it. Uh, the way they describe it is that it sees the card maker hop in their proverbial DeLorean, head back in time when everything cost a nickel and people walked 10 miles to school each day uphill both ways. Um, so that's kind of interesting. It's basically piping back into the past. And if we look on the box here, we can see uh, that it says six cards per pack, 24 packs per box. Uh, what's inside it? Historical figures, man. Um, so for example, you could potentially get things like uh, Edgar Allan Poe and Jack Johnson, the, uh, the boxer, Joe DiMaggio, but you can get Harry Truman and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. I'm interested in it. I thought I'd just pop it open, see what it is, uh, see what the particulars are. And so let me squeeze this wrapper right off and let's see if we can also look at it. doesn't have odds, I don't think, per se. I think it does have uh, a description of some of the cards within it. Uh, hopefully that focuses. So we would expect a Ferguson Bakery pennant box topper or a movie poster box topper. Uh, that Ferguson Bakery was, uh, I think their pennant's actually from, two, from 1916. Uh, and they're kind of rare. They're probably each worth about 100 to 200 bucks, the originals, of course. Uh, what else does it have? It has historic signatures. It has museum age memorabilia cards, which I believe are, you know, uh, pieces of people's dresses and stuff. Two headlines, it's per box headlines, like newspaper headlines. Two better up per box. Uh, one Newark Evening World Supplement. So that's essentially what we would get, I guess, within this nifty little uh, package. But you shall discover it alongside me, and we shall see. So let's see how this pops open. So there we can see that silver thing would be the box topper, which would be the pennant or the movie poster. Kind of inter interesting for maybe 25, 30 bucks to dip my toes in different waters. I'm gonna save this for last, why not? And then I'm gonna squirrel right through these uh, these packages. I do think that there are uh, variation cards, which I might not be able uh, to note or um, perceive, so I will probably write those under the video. On top of that, there would be parallels uh, as well. I believe there's white border parallels, and I believe the minis have parallels, like brown parallels, blue parallels, something to that effect. So we do have Joe Jackson. So, these should be interesting. So, we are guaranteed an auto in here, and I don't necessarily think the auto has anything to do with baseball. It can theoretically, but it also might not. Uh, in terms of the autos, there, I think there's an interesting mix of potential autos. Uh, we shall see what they are. I know that, for example, there are cut signatures, which are super rare, but the museum age memorabilia cards include Ted Williams, Dave Parker, Lou Piniella, Secretary? <laughs> That's kind of interesting, his memorabilia piece. I don't think it's a piece of the horse. Uh, Don Wells. Oh, Johnny Bench. So Johnny Bench was one of the best um, catchers of his era, if not the best, along with Gary Carter. They were basically were the two guys in that era. Okay, and then we have one of these. So these are pop-ups. So we have a Walter Hagen golfer pop-up. Uh, very much like the cards from, what was it, the 19, 1935 hockey cards of pop-ups. And just continuing on here. So these minis, broadleaf backs, I guess are basic backs. Bill Dickey and Sam Crawford. Really, really nice looking cards though. Uh, I do believe that there's a blank spaces within some of these packs, which will make them seem thicker than they are. So this is a base pack. 
Then focus. Partridge family? Brady Bunch. Yeah, I confused the two. That's kind of cool. Frankie Fritch. And we have a, oh wow, a John Dean. We certainly have uh, historical stuff from the Nixon. So this is a Candy Crofts Red. So this actually would happen to be a parallel. I'm gonna miss a lot of this stuff, but we, we certainly do have mini parallels. And the mini parallels, I believe, are Broadleaf Brown, Broadleaf Blue, Candy Croft Red, and Candy Croft Blue, and Ty Cobb Tobacco. So there's, and I think there's black ones as well. The black ones are numbered to one, so these aren't numbered per se, but they certainly are variations or um, parallels. Alright, Nelson, and there is Jack Johnson, who was probably the first successful black boxer to uh, break the color barrier, but they tried to imprison him and so on. He was actually married to a white woman. Uh, also, probably one of the reasons why Muhammad Ali is such a good defensive fighter. He's the guy who invented really being uh, spectacularly defensive to never be hit. So that's, that's really cool. We do have Ty Cobb. Uh, I believe Ty Cobb is second, oh, I believe he's second overall in hits in the, in the history of the game. You know, there's only two hitters in the history of the game who've, who've hit 4,000 hits. One would be Ty Cobb, the other one would be Pete Rose. So that's kind of cool. Phil Rizzuto. I'm just going to look at the backs just in case. Still looking for thin packs in here. Uh, so this is intriguing. I picked up this box because it fell under $30 and I just thought it sort of was an interesting, just really cool champs looking cards. I'm a big fan of the champs hockey cards. Uh, and these people in the golden ages, although champs I believe is from Pezzoli Upper Deck, these old school ones are from Panini, but it's not usually have cardboardy cards. And uh, I've always liked them because I like the OPG feel and the old school or Harker's feel. Here's Bobby Allison. So there's Bob Woodward. So that, and it's a young looking Bob Woodward, he still comments, uh, he still writes books. He wrote uh, a recent book on Trump. Um, and he's always been sort of judicious and uh, not particularly um, ideological. Can't speak today for some reason. Shouldn't matter, that's Duke Ellington. That's cool. Willie McCovey and Archie Vaughn. Uh, so we should get a memorabilia card at some point in time, and and an auto. The auto would be will be really interesting to see whether we get. I'd actually like Ron Lafleur, who was a. Oh, this is the um, memorabilia piece. So I'll put that aside. I'd ideally like a Ron Lafleur, who um, was on the Montreal Expos around 1980, 1979-80, uh, and he was discovered in a prison, believe it or not, uh, and was one of the fastest base dealers of his era. A uh, short career with a couple of teams like Detroit, Montreal, and Chicago, I think. And there's Pew Reese, there's Joe Namath. Uh, but I like the Ron LaFleur just because the uh, connection to the Montreal Expos and the fact that they discovered him in a prison, which is kind of the craziest thing ever, but it's because he could run the bases in their prison league. There's Nolan Ryan. And another one of his blanks, and then the mini. And the mini here would be Dizzy Dan. And that's just a. Uh, We have an insert here. I don't be interested to see what that is. So we have our mini. <laughs> our mini is the Loch Ness monster. That's an interesting thing to be a card. Here, of course, we have Theodore as well. Uh, he was a Republican, an outdoorsman, uh, one of the most respected presidents of all time. Usually, he ranks, I think, in the top seven. Ben Hogan, Frank Tanana, and so what is this thing? So, oh cool, speaking of the devil, this is Ron LaFleur. It's a Ron LaFleur Golden Age. So this is a variation, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what they call it, Evening World. Okay, I think there's one of them uh, per box. Yeah, it's, it's Newark. Newark as in New Jersey, Evening World cards. 
really nice. And I got the wrong before, so I spiked the, the Expo. Considering that there are only one in the entire box, and of course I get the one guy that I wanted. That's my Montreal Juju, which is just, you know, consistently consistent as opposed to consistently inconsistent. Uh, let's continue on here. <laughs> Kellogg. I assume this guy would be the Kellogg cereal guy. Boy, my tongue today is tied in a knot, which is unusual for me. Usually I tie language into knots. I believe this might be a parallel, right? Because it has a different color back. So this is another parallel. We've, we've hit one of the red ones and we've hit one of the blue ones. Man of War, which is a horse. And then we have John F. Kennedy, uh, who was really, you know, it, it, a lot of people forget that he was most renowned for the fact that he was a Catholic at the time. It's such a stretch to elect a Catholic. Of course, now that seems ridiculous, but that's just how time evolves. Oh, there's Mark Spitz, who was the best swimmer, uh, who had the record for the most medals until Phelps surpassed him. And then we have a headlines, extra, extra headlines. So these headlines, I believe there's two per box. And it's an FDR headline. That's really cool. That's really nice. Look at, look at the back of this thing. You know, I mean, the United States of America, it's they're going through such turmoil right now. Just ideological civil war, um, you know, just very... Uh, divided and divisiveness and so on it's when you think back at a time where you know everybody was on board obviously because the nation had external threats it's just such a shame to see a country fall apart at the seams broadleaf cigarettes team tennis and there's Duke Ellington so this is the uh, full-size Duke Ellington I should look at the back of those So I think we, we have an auto and we have a memorabilia. I have no idea what they are. Uh, I think we're guaranteed one of either. We certainly aren't guaranteed more than that. Whitey Ford, uh, Catfish Hunter, Thurman Munson. Then he died in a plane crash. Uh, Nancy Lopez, Buck Leonard. Ah. Oh, there's the Titanic. That didn't end well. 1,500 people died. That was in 2012. Steve Garvey. Unsinkable boat. These really are cool. The minis are really nice. There's a Jane Mansfield. Rogers Hornsby. to see the minis every pack. Kind of cool. Metal Arc Lemon. Uh, Iron Man. Was he on the Globe Trotters? I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's the other half of the uh, Bernstein Woodward uh, troop. Both those cats are still alive. Both those guys still uh, provide commentary. Let's go for the thin Fun product, man, from Panini. I sort of come to appreciate and respect Panini, even though they typically do lower end stuff. There's Le Grand Orange, as they call them in Quebec, uh, Rusty Staub. He's another guy I would love to have his auto, but I think he's passed, hasn't he? Uh, Seattle Slough. And there's Richard Nixon. With that trustworthy face. You know, what could go wrong? It's actually... 
you think? I mean, it's why he lost the election to JFK. It's just that face really wasn't going to get it done. Uh, okay. I think that's Captain Shunter. And look at this Edgar Allan Poe, uh, who is a poet and uh, had short stories and... I guess he's from 18, he was born probably early 18-somethings, but uh, what was so amazing about him was how he did these macabre, um, dark, scary stories and poems. The most famous one, obviously, is The Raven. Most people remember that from, from their high school days, we were probably taught it in class. But it's actually kind of fun, sort of, a, I guess, a precursor to horror films. There's Mazeroski, Mazeroski. Look at this guy, Red Grange. Now, I don't know if I'd want to be anywhere near this guy in a bad mood. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool, look, we got a Gordie Howe. That's really nice. So you could theoretically uh, hit a case hit of a Gordie Howe auto in these boxes. Uh, don't bank on it, but uh, that's really nice. And it's got him in the 1940s here, or 50s, certainly in his heyday. It's probably actually around the 50s, this look here. 26 seasons, same amount of seasons as Chris Chelios, by the way. Um, but he played over, what was it, four decades? Something just ridiculous. Five decades? I can't remember all these uh, truisms. Okay. So, we have a horse, of course. Oh, there we have Reggie Jackson. Nice. Mr. October himself. Affirmed, which is a horse. And then we have a piece of memorabilia. So let's, let's just get these all sorted and squared away here if we can. Uh, lots of horses in this. Oh, look at that, Frank Robinson. Uh, he actually managed the Expos for a, for a tad. Quite, quite a bit of hardware he's won, this cat. Nice. Then we have Jackie Robinson, number 42, uh, who also played in Montreal. He played in Montreal right around the time my mother was a kid. Uh, and, and, and he was just accepted with open arms uh, to, to Montreal. So let's see what our piece of memory So these are the museum pieces, I believe they call them, or whatever they call them. There it is, museum age. Uh, and authentic collection. So it's a piece of, who is this? So let's see what it says. His name's Anonymous Seductions. Rudolf Valentino, Latin lover. Dancer making his way to Hollywood there. Silent classics, interesting. So I guess it's a piece of memorabilia from him. How bizarre and interesting. So that's the first one. Uh, as I said, not much baseball in here. So let's let's take a, a look at the last one. Uh, there's Boog Powell. Uh, here, put this aside. Charlie Chaplin. It'd be nice to get a Charlie Chaplin. Bill Russell. And let's see. So we have a historic signature. Let's see what the signature is. Uh, it's a, oh, is that the Brady Bunch girl? Wow, how cool is that? Her auto. Really cool. So it's it's actually Marcia from the Brady Bunch. How bizarre and weird and cool. It's actually really nice. That's really nice. <laughs> of all the things to get though, I mean, this is actually from my childhood. Uh, kind of cool. All right, well, I have no idea what this box would entail. It's an interesting box if you play that. Okay guys, uh, for the recap, I realized I did not open up this thing. So this would happen to be the box topper. Let's see what's within the box topper. And I believe it's one of the pendants. Yes, it is a Bobby Jones pendant. Really nice. Beautiful little soft felt pendant. So again, these mimic uh, pendants. Oh, it's numbered card number seven. Uh, it mimics pendants from the from 1916, uh, the bakery pennants. Kind of cool, I like that. So that's sweet, that's a nice looking pennant. Uh, time for the recap. So let's do a little bit of a recap fairly quickly if we can. We received a nice stack of heavy, heavy base 
Uh, think like the Upper Deck Champs cards, really, really nice across all sports. So these obviously are not simply uh, solely and exclusively about baseball. And you see the backs of them are all blue. I don't know if we have variations or, or whatnot within them, but, uh, but a nice stack. To give you an idea of some of the types of base that we did receive, just to go through a couple of them, we did receive young Billy Martin at second baseman, Rusty Stolp, who's with the Montreal Expos, who have Grand Orange, uh, Nolan Ryan, there's Shoeless Joe Jackson. Equally, we did get Jack Johnson, who was uh, the first, you know, black heavyweight uh, from, I guess, 1919 in that era. Broke the color barrier by marrying a white woman, etc. Fairly ostentatious dude, Ty Cobb. And Harry Truman, as well as uh, Eisenhower. We also have Edgar Allan Poe, Edgar Allan Poet, uh, who all Americans cherish as one of the first real macabre horror poets. Uh, and writers, and then we actually do have Bernstein and Woodward, Woodward and Bernstein, the uh, the two reporters who broke uh, the Nixon scandal. So what else? What else do we have? What else did we get? We did also equally so get minis. So these minis are basically parallels of the uh, of the base set. So they're exactly the same cards, uh, but in mini versions. The back, the most prevalent ones, are the broadleaf brown, uh, but they, there are variations on the backs, which I did locate a few of. We did have just a, a blue broadleaf back as well as these candy croft ones which are probably a little bit rarer I guess I gather. So these, uh, so these are kind of cool. Um, I don't know what the print run is for these for these blues but they're something. Equally so there were some candy croft red variations so that would be that and it's just here we have again t tied to um, Watergate a couple of other ones here. So these are kind of cool, these uh, variation backs or parallels, if you will. We did hit the headline cards, which are sort of newspaper cards. Uh, we have an FDR and we have a Arcaro uh, horse. Uh, so these are headlines. And look at the backs, very USA, USA, USA. Uh, what else did we receive? The one so there's only one of these per 24. Uh, they are called uh, Newark Evening World Supplements. And I hit the wrong floor, who I would want to hit because it was Montreal Expo, from the Prison League initially. Uh, and that'd be Newark, New Jersey, I gather. So that's kind of cool to have received one of those and to hit uh, an expo. We did receive two of these pop-ups. I do not know what they call the batter up per box. I guess they call them batter ups, I think. Whatever these pop-ups are. A Man of War, which is a horse, and then Walter Hagen, who's the golfer. Very sort of reminiscent of the 1935 uh, pop-up cards. Uh, those would have been OPGs, I think, the 1935s. We did receive one base of Gordie Howe, so we did receive a hockey card within the mix, uh, intermixed, interwoven, uh, interstist. And then uh, I figured out <laughs> who we have here. We do have, uh, so this is a museum age piece, and it's actually Rudolph Valentino. He was a starlight. Uh, he was basically an Italian actor uh, who was a heartthrob, I guess in the 1920s. This, I guess this would have been before sound. So it's a piece of something, his pants? I gather it's a piece of his pants, does it even say? So it says there, it basically says his back on there. So that's interesting. Uh, and then finally, my hit of the box. I hit a Marine uh, McCormick who was Marcia from the Brady Bunch. If you remember her, she was a, quite a big deal when we were kids. Uh, Marcia, there it is, the eldest Brady Bunch daughter. Um, and I received her auto. So it's kind of cool, kind of weird, kind of bizarre. What an interesting box. Anyways. So I thought I'd open up a box of this Panini, why not, Golden Age, because I thought it'd be somewhat intriguing, interesting, uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know, it is what it is, I guess. I happen to be full of cards live and direct from a place called Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm.